Hi guys, this is the fourth part of my presentation. In this video, I will explain our journal paper published in IEEE Transactions on Intelligent Transportation Systems. In this work, we proposed a machine learning based workload orchestration for multi tier, multi access, vehicular edge computing architectures. In this figure, you can see a generic vehicular edge computing architecture. After gaining enough experience in the edge computing domain, we focused on the intelligent transportation systems. This work is proposed for multi-access, multi-tier vehicular edge computing systems. Again, we have three tiers here. And we have two options for broadband internet access. That's why this is a multi-access architecture. In an intelligent transportation system, there are many acronyms. I want to summarize them quickly. OBU is the onboard processing unit of the vehicles. RSU stands for the roadside unit that includes vehicle or edge servers. V2V stands for the vehicle to vehicle transmission. V2P is the vehicle to pedestrian transmission. V2R stands for the vehicle to RSU transmission. And finally, V2I is the vehicle to infrastructure transmission. Onboard processing unit, vehicle to vehicle communication and vehicle, vehicle to pedestrian communication are not in the scope of our work. If you look at our scenario, we have three offloading options here. Let's assume this car wants to offload a task to a remote server. Okay, now let's look at the options. The first option is sending the tasks to the least loaded edge server. It can be either this one or that one. The second option is offloading to the cloud server through RSU. We assume that the RSUs are connected to a MAN, which also provides broadband internet access. Finally, the last option is offloading to the cloud server via a cellular network. We assume that there is a base station covering our simulation environment so that each vehicle can share the same network. You can see all the options in this figure. Option 1 is offloading to the least loaded edge server. Option 2 is offloading the cloud server through RSU. Option 3 is offloading the cloud server through the base station, I mean the cellular network. Okay, now let me explain our machine learning based workload orchestrator. Similar to our previous work, the clients, in this case the vehicles, offload their task of different sizes. Our approach again consists of two stages. In the first stage, we performed a classification algorithm for each option in order to predict the result of the operation, I mean the offloading operation. In the second stage, the service time is estimated. As a result of the estimations, we pick the target virtual machine that promises the minimum service time. Well, you may ask why our solution includes two stages. Actually, our paper reviewers also asked. We started our study with one stage solution. We tried to find the best option to offload with one machine learning algorithm. However, we could not get promising results because the offloading result and the service time of a task are related but different metrics. The service time is only valid when the task offloading result is successful. We tried to use higher service time values for the failed tasks, but this approach alters the dataset and introduces artifacts in the data. 
Dividing the problem into two subproblems allow us to use two simpler models with different input features and that are easier to tune and generalize. We observe that the classification stage is the most critical and challenging part of our solution. Therefore, we worked on it more and tried to optimize. First of all, we tried three different classifiers. Navi bias, support vector machine, and multilayer perceptron. The Navi bias classifier is a simple classifier that is based on the bias theorem. And we use John Plus sequential minim minimal optimization algorithm for training the SVM classifier. And the multilayer perceptron is an artificial neural network type which has an input output layer and an arbitrary number of hidden layers between them. After we decided on our classifier, we tried to find the best features. We collected around 35 million of loading results by using our simulator. If we use this data on the training phase, we got really best scores, especially for true negative value, because only 2 million of them belongs to the unsuccessful offloading case. Then, we balance this data in a way to equalize the successful and failure cases and true negative values increased in this case. We know some of the features for each classifier depending on our knowledge. Then we tested some other features that we are not sure about their effect on the performance. We added vehicle density, short-term load and both in our dataset. And the best F-score performance is obtained when only short-term load is used. Short-term load is actually the number of offloaded tasks in the recent past, such as the last one seconds. This value can infer possible congestion on a specific mission in the near future. All features for each classifier are listed in this table. Okay. Let me share our neural network configuration. We have one hidden layer and two or three hidden units depending on the inputs. The learning rate and momentum rate for the backpropagation algorithm are O.1 and O.2 and the number of epochs is a thousand. For example, in this figure, you can see the neural network of edge classifier. In these figures, you can see the confusion matrices of our classifiers. The green boxes in the confusion matrix correspond to correctly classified observations, while the red boxes show the misclassified instances. The columns on the far right of the plot show the precision for each class. The rows at the bottom of the plot show the recall for each class. The cell in the bottom right of the plot shows the overall accuracy. As you can see, we can predict offloading results for the cloud very accurately. But predicting the edge result is a more difficult problem. If we want to improve this work, it would be better to start with an edge classifier. Now I want to explain the regression models used for each option. We used a linear regression model because we see that the service time is a linear combination of our features. In this table, you can see the features we used in our regression models. The task length is the main factor that has an impact on the service time. So we use it for all options. Edge server utilization is crucial for edge servers, but not important for cloud servers. From the cloud point of view, the network delay is more significant. Well, let's look at our competitors. We use four algorithm as the competitors. The random algorithm selects the target virtual machine randomly and it is used to show the worst case. A simple moving average is a time series forecasting method. 
it is used on statistics and it can efficiently forecast future outcomes by using short-term historical data. A multi-armed banded algorithm is a reinforcement learning approach that tries to maximize the expected gain. We modified Sun et al's work and adapted it to our simulation environment. The game theory based algorithm uses a multi-user non-cooperative -co uh, computational offloading game. It adjusts the offloading probability of vehicles to achieve the maximum utility. Again, we modified Wang et al's work slightly and use it as a competitor. Actually, all these competitors ex expect random are very efficient approaches. Let's look at our simulation study and the results. In this work, we simulated a smart highway. The road is divided into segments and the speed of the vehicles varies on each segment. In this way, we generate tra traffic in red places. I mean the traffic jam. Therefore, the number of vehicles will increase in these hotspot areas by the time passed. In this figure, you can see the average number of vehicles on the road segments. We plot this graph heat map actually by using the results coming from our simulations. As the number of vehicles increases, traffic jam can be observed in the hot support segments. In this experiment, we use three applications. For example, the navigation application generates small tasks every three seconds. Actually, it is not exactly three. The, uh, the inter-arrival time is exponentially distributed, so you can consider it as an average value. On the other hand, infotainment application generate big tasks uh, every 15 seconds. Here we also have a maximum delay requirement and the delay sensitivity uh, values. We will be using these values while calculating the quality of experience score. Other important simulation parameters are given in this table. We assume that each RSU has 802.11p capable access point and the coverage is 200 meters. In this work, we use the Markov modulated Poisson process for the network model, uh, delay model. Actually, MMPP M1 uses an MM1Q where the arrival rates of the tasks are modified periodically. Okay, I don't want to explain the other uh, parameters in detail. Let's switch to the simulation results. In this figure, you can see the average failed task performance. The machine learning based approach outperforms its competitors. The other competitors, except random, have an exploration phase. They made some wrong decisions to explore the current situation and then make more accurate decisions accordingly. Especially after 1500 vehicles, the system is overloaded and even a small number of wrong decisions adversely affect the performance. However, a machine learning based algorithm has a training phase, so it learns how to operate in which situation in the training phase. In addition, the machine learning based algorithm uses more input variables, hence it can decide by using more criteria. Here you can see the same result for different kinds of applications. It can be said that the machine learning based algorithm provides very well performance for small tasks. Its performance is also good for bigger tasks. The average service time score of the successful offloaded tasks can mislead us in the delay loss systems. Therefore, we use a quality of experience formula which considers both the service time and the task loss as defined in this equation. Each task has a delay requirement Ri, which stands for 
maximum service time. If the task fails or is completed in more than two array, we assume the service time zero. The average quality of experience with respect to the number of vehicles is shown in this figure. As you see, machine learning base and multi-arm banded base algorithms starts with 100% because their goal is to minimize the service time. However, the random and simple moving average based approaches do not aim to minimize the service time, so their maximum quality of experience is around 90%, even if there is no task failure. As the number of vehicles increases, the performance of the competitors getting worse, because they lost too much tasks. The proportion of the service time of successfully completed tasks is shown in this figure. Since the smaller service time infers the better performance, it is better to have a higher value on the left side of the graph. The machine learning based solution provides the best performance in terms of the service time because it has more tasks that are completed under half seconds and fewer tasks that take more than uh, one and a half seconds to execute. Well, my presentation is hopefully completed. Now let me give a brief summary. In this presentation, I started with the edge computing philosophy and then talked about some of our journal papers on this domain. Firstly, I introduced our open source edge computing simulator for education and research. The most challenging research problem we have dealt with during our research study is the workload orchestration problem. As already stated, using the traditional approaches for the workload orchestration cannot provide the desired performance on the dynamic environments where the state of the resources changes rapidly. Therefore, we proposed two novel approaches to solve this problem on different edge computing systems. Our first work was a fuzzy logic based workload orchestrator for multi tier edge computing system. Our second work was an ML based workload orchestrator for multi tier, multi access vehicle edge computing systems. If you wonder our future work, I can say that we want to focus on the intelligent transportation systems. We plan to integrate simulation of urban mobility and vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle offloading infrastructure to our simulator to enhance our simulation scenario. In addition, we want to work on a deep learning based workload orchestrator. Finally, I want to answer the questions waiting in the GitHub and the Google discussion group. Well, the video is ended here. I will add all the references used in this presentation to the description part of this video. You can have a look if you wonder. Thanks for watching. I hope it will be helpful for you.